Welcome back to the dirty shop, but in this case it's the dirty house because we're doing some uh, work on the house and we've uh, got stuff piled up and moved around so it's kind of a mess. But uh, I'm working this time, I'm working on putting together a camp kitchen for the trailer. My wife is going uh, on a, about a three week road trip. She's going to go up Yellowstone and through Boise and uh, up to visit some friends there in Idaho and then come back down through Northern California, Southern Oregon, that sort of thing. And she's doing it without me. It's a sad moment, but uh, sometimes it's the way it goes. I'm just glad she could travel and feel safe to do so without me. She's going to take our nice trailer, our, our car, our conversion, and uh, I want her to have a kitchen she can move around. We've been using like the, uh, the plastic tote bins for years as a camp box, loaded in the car, whatever, and uh, you can haul it around and it, it's mobile, but it's cumbersome and kind of difficult. And if it's in a trailer, we can, we've got a little more space to store stuff and a little more uh, room to move things around and to get things in and out. You can just roll this down the back ramp once it's assembled. So I've been thinking about building one of these. I'd like to build one out of aluminum. It would be a lot lighter. This is a bit heavy, which is my only real problem with it. I picked this one up here at uh, Harbor Freight. I'll put a picture of this label for you up on the uh, screen. And as you can see there, it's just uh, a single drawer tool chest with a cart below it. And it, as is, it would probably work fairly well, but I'm going to do some changes. I'm probably going to have to change the wheels out a little bit and uh, move some stuff around, maybe box in the lower portion of this to make it more of a cabinet. But uh, we'll see how that looks after I get it put together. So I'm going to work on putting this together and then we'll get back to it once it's together to see how good it is. Warning, this video may contain scenes of extreme untidiness. Viewer discretion is advised. So here we've got our toolbox assembled. It's pretty sturdy, nice and solid. Um, I put the legs on backwards for the first time, so read your instructions. and. Uh, these uh, these bolt holes were actually up here along the box, so I had to flip it over. But uh, I left the wheels off because all the wheels on this are good for a toolbox because it, a, a wheel like this would allow you to move the uh, it would allow you to move the toolbox in any direction, which would be nice, and then lock it down because they're lock offs. But as a as a kitchen, it's not it wouldn't work very good because you'd be trying to cut on it or cook on it, and the kitchen would be rolling all over the place. You don't want that to happen. Even if you lock the wheels, it would still scoot around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two wheels that are locked in a single direction. So that instead of having the, the, the uh, caster here or the spinning part, it would just have a, a lock. And those will go on that side. And then this side is going to have a pair of legs. And that way you can pick it up from the handle like a wheelbarrow and roll it around and then set it down and it'll stay still. And then on this side, I'll probably going to, eventually I'll make a table that just folds down against the side here. And then it'll pop up and it'll be able to use it as a table with a couple of leg braces. And uh, you can close the top and like have a, a cooking surface and then a table on the side or something of that nature. Now I'm going to install my wheels on this, uh, this kitchen cart. And uh, I went down to the store and I picked up a couple of these 5 inch wheels which match height wise and bolt pattern with these ones that came with the uh, cart. So I'm going to try it by putting two of these rotary ones on the cart and then I'm going to put these two in the rear. I don't know why I didn't come with this setup because this is an easier setup to run on something like this and hopefully this will be enough. If not, I'll have to put uh, feet on here instead. But for now, I'm going to try it with these wheel, these uh, unidirectional wheels and these rotary wheels. So here's the cart all assembled. I've put my uh, new wheels on the back. I put the set that came with it with the locks on the front. They only came with one set of locking ones. So I would have had to replace those at least in order to make it functional. So I got the locking ones on the front and then the, uh, the bike, the directional wheels on the back. So now I can roll it around in the kitchen. Um, and then when I get to where I want to be, I can push the locks on these wheels and hopefully it's still kind of wobbly. I might, I might still want to put the legs down on this and see what the wife thinks about it. But for now, uh, it's not too bad, but it's kind of wobbly. I think if you're trying to cook on it, it might be annoying. But I also found when I was at the store picking up those other wheels, I found this set of magnetic paper towel holders, which is pretty cool. And those I'm just going to put here on the side. They have them in a bunch of different colors, um, except black, go figure. So those will go there. And I'll be able to put a roll of paper towels on that, which would be nice. 
I pulled the stickers off. I didn't really like the stickers. So um, I pulled them off and they came off clean and left no residue, which is always nice. I hate it when you pull off a sticker and it just leaves goo everywhere to try and scrub off. But for now, I've got the, uh, the car basically assembled. So here we've got my rollaway kitchen. It fits nicely in the back of the trailer here. And I want it to, to go right there and stay still. The problem is when we're driving, this thing's going to be all over the place. So I need to make a mount to hold it up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of my track and it's going to go right here. Basically, at the right height to grab this. And then on that track, I've got two of these crossbars. So one will go here, and then the, the other one will go on the other side, and I'll put a padding on it, and the, uh, the kitchen will slide between them. And then I'll have a, an eye bolt here. Take it out. And then I have an eye bolt right there, and then we'll be able to wrap a strap around the, the thing. So it'll back it in there. Grab a strap around it or hold it still. Okay, now that I've got my bracket, my bar on the wall and my brackets on the bar here, this one is bolted down solid, okay? And then this one here is still a little loose because I'm gonna, this is not quite fitting yet, but because I don't want this banging around and there's chunks of metal and we're just knocking all my paint off and getting ugly. So I bought a roll of this um, called sponge window seal. I'd like about a two inch strip because it's about two inches wide, but, uh, the best I could find was one and three quarters, so it's close. So I'm gonna take a piece of this, and sticky on one side and uh, not on the other. So I could take it and do this. kitchen is done here I've got my rubber padding on the system so that it doesn't get so that my kitchen doesn't get beat up I've got a couple of good eye bolts here this side's got a draw uh, just a draw buckle on it this side's got the webbing tied on all you got to do is push the kitchen back into the slot which is pretty tight there grab your grab your strap it comes around through the draw buckle here and then pull it down and you can lock the wheels if you want just to kind of give it a little, little mess of mobility and there it is that's not going anywhere sweet i've had this kitchen set up for a few months now and we've had a chance to try it and decide things that we need to change or make better improve about it so we used it on a trip where I went to, where my wife went to Idaho and we had a chance to use it a little bit. I flew up there and met her and we used the, this kitchen. She used it the whole time and I got to play with it a couple days. And you can actually see the video of that trip on my other channel, Out There Fishing. Um, and I'll put a link below in the description probably and I'll try and put one at the end of this video so you guys can go and take a look at that and my other channel. And of course, if you get over there and happen to like what I'm doing, uh, I'd appreciate your subscription there as well. Um, but basically, we determined that we need sides and a back on it, which was already kind of part of the plan because the stuff was rattling out inside the trailer. So, it's, you know, especially when you, you know, you break and then the stuff would slide off and then end up falling over the front. So uh, 
We're going to put sides and a back on it, and I'm going to use this leftover paneling that came from the uh, trailer siding portion of this uh, project. So I just ended up with a bunch of these leftover panels, which are about the perfect size to go on there. I got plenty of it left, and I'll be able to build the whole thing out of that. The other thing is, is we, when we have something on top of here, like we're using it to cook on, we can't, um, we can't get to the stuff that's inside the top of this cabinet because obviously this lid lifts up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two brackets that came with it, and these are just tool uh, holders that were supposed to bolt on the side. You can put like screwdrivers and things like that in them, uh, but they're very conveniently the same size and nice. And I'm going to put these on the side over here so that they'll swing up and down. And then I'm going to mount another piece of this material or pro probably something a little thicker than this on there as a tabletop so that we have a working surface that's not this working surface. And I'm going to use a couple of these hinge support brackets to, uh, to hold that up and hopefully that will be strong enough to hold up our little stove. We, for quite a while now in our camp box, we're, we're camped a lot and for quite a while now we've been using this small portable butane stove. I, I picked this one up at the Asian market again, but you can get these all over the place. I'll put a link below for one on Amazon. Um, but basically it's just a, a little butane stove. It uses these nice little cylinders here and they're inexpensive, uh, readily available, and it's just really simple to use. Just put this lever down and click it on and it's now it's cooking and ready to go. And it's just really convenient. These are like 30 bucks. So um, it's a great stove. I've been using this one for three years with no issues at all. So uh, this is, I highly recommend these little stoves. They're great, uh, simple camping stoves and they're just inexpensive. Uh, I carry a backup like a like a backpacking stove uh, in the in the box here too, in case I need a second burner. But most of the time we just use this one. So I'm gonna get on to cutting this out. The uh, a family of wasps has infested my, my uh, drill press. They're living in the motor, which is really annoying. And so I've been fighting them, trying to get rid of them so I can actually work in my, in my work area. Uh, but I think my table saw is far enough away that I could probably get these cut out without getting assaulted by the wasps. So I gotta go be brave. So here we go, I've got the uh, the side panel bolted on, sweet. I've got a new tie-dye shirt, which I'm loving. Uh, my wife said it's too small for me, so apparently I need to pick up large shirts next time instead of mediums, because my belly sticks out. But, whatever. Uh, got that side on, I've got the back side, it's just got one bolt in it so far, just to, I put it on there for a space, uh, just the spacer just to see how it fit. I had to get some longer bolts to make it work. Um, and of course, these bolts, when they both, when I've got them in both sides of it, they start interfering with each other. So I can, I have to use some of the short ones and some of the long ones, and the short ones just barely grab the nuts. So hopefully they'll stick on. I'm thinking I'll put a spot of super glue on them or a Loctite um, to keep them still. I'm gonna get around the back side, get that on, get the other side on. Hopefully I can finish this up tonight. Well, there it is. It's uh, got the sides on it, and uh, I think I'm pretty much ready to go with the. With that, I'm going to varnish it when I get back from my trip because I don't want it to smell too bad. i got to use it in a couple of days. So uh, once I get back, then I'll give it a good varnish. It'll match the interior really nicely. It'll be sweet. I decided to change the way I'm going to do the tables. Uh, so I'm going to load it up here in the trailer. I'm going to take the trailer up to my other shop. And hopefully I'm going to get some work done on the bed. And I'm going to make some tables for this that will go on here. And I think they're going to hook under this edge here because it's got kind of a folded over edge all the way across. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a folded edge here. I'm going to make an aluminum table that actually goes in here and folds across. Because if I put a table on this side that's fixed permanently, it might interfere with the way I've got it mounted up in the trailer. So I'm going to load this up and head up the hill. Ow! Flip-flops aren't always the best thing to do this sort of thing in. Just ran over my foot. Use caution. And we're ready to go. 
This tool right here is called a shear. It's just a big, like a paper cutter. It's a metal cutter. It's got a blade back here. You step on this pedal down here and the blade lowers and cuts your material. My dad has a tendency to pile crap on it, but uh, that's what it is. So I realized after I started drawing my lines that my piece that I was working with wasn't square. I expected it to be, but uh, I should have measured it first. So now I'm gonna trim it to the right size. So I'm gonna go 20 inches in this direction. Um, and over here, I'm gonna go 20 inches as well. So I'm gonna make it square. So basically, I just wanna take this and I've drawn the 20 inch line mark there. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna line it up. This way, this edge is straight. I'm gonna just um, line that up with the edge of the blade by looking down it. It's not super precision, but that should be it right there. Make sure I'm square on this edge and then this rotates around and the lever broke off here, but I got another one over here. And that clamps down and holds that still so it won't go anywhere and then you jump on this. Take the clamp off. And now hopefully, looks like I might have to go a little less than 20 because it's not quite um, square there, but I'm gonna go with this side. And I'm off to go a little smaller on that side. But go over here. Where it's lined up. Good. The important thing is that this edge is here and that it's clamped down solid because sometimes it'll wander. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. The tools are awesome. This tool here is called a brake. Uh, this is a straight brake. Uh, I'm, I think that's what they call it. Uh, they also make something called a finger brake, which actually has little little bits that you could screw on here and you could take them out to make box shapes, which would be really a lot nicer and more usable, but this is the one I've got, so I tend to have to work with it. So now I've got this about how I want it. I need to fold these edges down. When you're, whenever you're doing something like this, you really need to visualize what you're doing. Um, but uh, I'm gonna fold these edges down and then I've got the cuts here and when I push down on this with those edges folded down, these two cuts will hopefully overlap each other a little bit and then I'll be able to put a rivet through them and hold them in the position I want once I got this level how I want it. And then on this back end, hopefully I'll have enough room to get into the, the brake and bend this up at least a little bit. I should have only cut this side of this because then I could have riveted this point to that point, but it's not hypercritical there anyways because this is just to stiffen this outer edge. It won't really matter. But uh, I'm gonna try and get this in the brake now and we'll see if I can pull this off. All right, there we go, there it is. Hopefully it'll do the job. Um, I'm gonna stick a rivet right in here or a screw, but there's right there and voila. I might bend this, I think I'm gonna bend that bend just a slight bit more. I was hoping that that would be a little stiffer. This handle turned out to be not as rigid as I hoped. So I might have to do something about that. That's a little bit flexy for me, fortunately, but uh, this is called a pop rivet. You just drill a hole the appropriate size for the rivet and you get one that's the right length. And you get your riveting tool and they've got a tip in them here that, of course I don't have the tool for. Um, and the tip here fits the diameter of the shaft on the pop rivet, so that's that one. Change that out. And then this goes in here. You open the handle up to the, to the riveter and you put the rivet into the hole it's just made. Hopefully this doesn't get in the way of my bar. It might be a problem, but we'll see. And then you can squeeze the riveting tool and it will break off and give you a nice bind there. Let's make sure that this still well as usual my projects take forever i tell my wife i'll be about an hour it's usually about three you know if i tell her it's gonna be all day then she might see me next week sometime so i've got some supports welded on here and i've 
spray painted them with some uh, black. Luckily, I've had some black spray paint. So we're going to reattach this. I sprayed the table as well, and it should be basically done. I'll show you when it's finished. Well, there you go. It may not be really strong enough to hold my stove. I think it will. It kind of bows out, but um, it uh, flexes and kind of sits nicely right about the spot where I would have my stove at. So it'll probably work uh, depending on how much weight we have on the stove. My spray paint, when I was spray painting it, the stupid tip dripped, and I got some drips on here, but I don't really care that much. It's going to wear off right away anyways. Um, I'm probably, probably going to come up with some sort of a plastic or non-slip coating or something I could put on here to make it a little more rigid. I'm probably going to have to come up with some other table, though, because this one's just not quite not quite what I was hoping for, but I think it might be uh, partially functional, at least. It's a little bit sloped still, but I think over time, the uh, weight being on it will cause it to, to settle down to where I want it to be. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not everything comes out perfect, but most things end up working. Here we are camping in beautiful Yosemite Valley here. There was a big fire down the way. We thought it was really going to smoke us out, but the firefighters took care of it, which is wonderful. Thank you, guys. And the valley is nice and clear. Just a little bit of smoke haze, but it's probably just from the campfires. That's really nice. We got to do some rock climbing, and we got to test out our kitchen here in the back of the trailer. It's all set up here nicely. I got my table attached. I got my coffee pot on here, and it works great with our little uh, camp stove that I showed you earlier. Now we can get in here and get to stuff if we need to, or just use it as a cooktop. Most of the stuff we keep in here are things like the stove or stuff that we're going to get out right away and then we don't need to get into here anymore while we're cooking with it and we can put it all back away inside. I've got the uh, paper towel holder up here on this on this rack because it doesn't stick to the side anymore where the I put that wood on there and it made it so that the paper towel holder doesn't stick. But there's plenty of other spots that are metal I can stick it on there. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got. I can take this out and use it outside or I can leave it in the trailer and use it inside which is really nice. My, my uh, tailgate here is set down as a deck. I've got just a log bracing up right now. I need to put a couple feet on that, but uh, that's for a future project. So thank you for watching. Please check out uh, one of my other videos maybe and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time on the uh, Dirty Shop.